Hi guys. Um, in today's class, we'll be learning about how to actually uh, make a YouTube video. But in this process, I would also want to teach you guys something really important most of the filmmakers follow or uh, learn about. So in the second class, in the second lesson, you'll be learning about what what is the basics of color correction, the importance of color grading, and what are the different file formats and what are the cameras that we are going to use in this class. Right? So going further, let us see what is a color correction. So color correction is nothing but like whenever you take a picture or whenever you uh, take a video, right? So mostly when you take a picture, like uh, these days, you have something called filters. So what these filters are essentially doing is they are actually adjusting certain level, certain parameters of each and every image. So for example, you have something like highlights, whites, blacks, contrast, white balance, uh, hue, saturation, intensity. So these are all the things that adjust the color, right? The color of your image. So that is something called color correction. Okay, I'll be sharing this document with you. I want you guys to go through this particular documentation so that you will have a better idea of what exactly color correction is. So there are some other concepts that I would we would be discussing in the future, right? So what exactly is white balance? Why is white balance measured in um, Kelvin? So the units of white balance is Kelvin. And what are the color temperatures? So 5600, when do you use 5600 Kelvin? Or when do you use 3200 Kelvin, right? So this is the technical part of uh, making films or understanding the specifications of what exactly that you want to create. CCT is nothing but correlated color temperature. And HSI is nothing but hue, saturation and intensity, right? So these are all the cool things about uh, color and once you understand what is color correction, many films, right, what they do is they actually take it in a flat profile. So there is something called profile, right? So your picture profile, which picture profile, which profile does your picture fit into? So most of the filmmakers, what they do is they take their films or they take their uh, videos or photos in completely flat colors. That means you won't see a lot of vibrant colors or they're not saturated. And in the post-production, that is in the editing room, what they do is they edit and enhance each and every single color individually. So that's where you get the real crisp colors. So that is what we are going to learn today. And the process of making these colors more crisp or adding more uh, emotion by adding a lot of colors to your story or colors to your picture is called color grading. There are many picture profiles, as I told you, right? So, for example, uh, in this particular video, I'll be using uh, one of the latest cameras called Canon R5, which I, I don't own, but I was I rented that from uh, Borrow Lenses. And uh, the picture profile that I shot, the complete video that you're going to see today, is in C-Log or uh, Canon Log. Like, if you're using a Sony camera, you have S-Log. But if you are using other cameras like Arri Alexa or Red Komodo, then you get something called a RAW. And if you are using another cameras like Blackmagic, so that's when you get ProRes. Okay? So enough of the discussion that we had so far and let us make a YouTube video. And this time we are not going to use the aspect ratio 9 is to 16, but we are going to use the aspect ratio 16 is to 9. And we are going to put our video quality as a 4K video quality. I'm not going to make a HD video, but I'm going to make a 4K video. Okay. Now, let us get back to our editing software. I'm going to open Final Cut Pro. This is the editing software that we discussed last week, uh, sorry, in the last class. And this is what we are going to use and first thing that i'm going to do is that you would also want to do is to create a new library so these are some of the libraries that i've been working with now i do have a new library i need to create a new library but before i create a new library there is a process that is already happening so this is called rendering okay so this is already happening over here for the current video that i was working on now let me create a new library and name it as 
DA class 2 Disney World Disneyland I guess I don't know Disneyland store so uh, we are going to edit a video that is that is something related to Disneyland which is in Los Angeles okay so I'm gonna save it in this particular um, folder once I save it I, I got an event so this is a library inside a library you have an event and let me name that event LA Disney store okay in this LA Disney store I need to <coughs> excuse me guys I need to add a new project YouTube video I need to add the project name YouTube video um, DA class 2 DA what I meant DA is digital arts class 2 so video quality is I don't want to take 1080 pixel HD but I wanted to shoot I wanted to record in 4k in 4k you have two resolutions one is 3840 times 2160 the other one is 4096 times 2048 the 4096 times 2048 is slightly higher so I'm gonna select that and then I'm gonna keep the rendering as it is but there are many other codecs that you can render which we will discuss about codec this is very technical but we can discuss about this little later once you get familiarized with what exactly this particular tool is okay now I'm gonna create a new folder now if you see my project is here my library is here and my event is here but inside my project I do not have any videos that means I need to pull my videos from my hard drive to here so I already have a hard drive let me, let me show this So I already have a hard drive which is backup plus. So in this hard drive, if you go to, let me see where the videos are, a letter vlog and DA class material. So my videos are over here. So I need to know where the, the location of the videos are. Once I know the location, all I have to do is press command I that is going to import the files and I will have to go to this particular file and then I have DA class material so when I open DA class material there are around 30 or 40 files that I have put it here so I'm gonna select this particular folder and click import selected the moment I click import selected all the videos are over here okay I just wanted to make one and a half minute or two minutes video but let us see if if we have a chance to actually you know make four minutes or five minutes video the okay, first thing I would want to start with a title okay so let me go, I clicked here titles or generators I don't want generators but I just want maybe I can use a generator let us see how this looks oh this looks cool but this looks too big we don't want we want only for six seconds let's say now I'm gonna open a I'm gonna click B when I click B I'm getting a blade tool and I'm gonna click it select and then delete this part on top of this I want to write something or maybe this is too you know it is not so visually pleasing to my eyes so I'm gonna change that this looks good or maybe clouds now clouds okay yeah I'm gonna go with the blobs I'm gonna click in Oh, you cannot do that so you just take it out here and this is for almost 30 seconds we don't want 30 seconds I want only for six seconds on top of that I'm gonna write 
a text okay this looks cool I'm gonna put it over here on top of this uh, let me put it and increase the size and here I'm gonna write Manzi tutorials. So I think uh, once the video is done, I can actually post this in our YouTube channel as well. Looks good. What do you guys think? Looks good. Yeah, looks perfect. Now let us import. Okay, so before we import, let us write something else. wanted something simple text okay. well, let us write a small disclaimer because I'm using um, Disney's content right so what I want to do is I want to remove the subtitles and then write remove this one as well this video is made for educational purpose only not for commercial purpose this video is made for only educational purpose not for Reasons. Oh, but this is too off. Okay, let us select this and uh, reduce the size. Okay, sounds good. Looks good. not for any commercial reasons perfect now once we go back to our media so we have around 40 different clips and because I went it in I went in a Christmas time I actually went to a small bakery over there and I really like that uh, ambience and also the cookies and coffee as well yeah but my only question is if you notice this what do you notice uh, these colors are completely flat right these colors are extremely flat so what we are going to do is we are going to add some colors to this first let us pick some sequences I'm gonna start with this particular scene which rotates so I'm gonna click I stop it and then pull it down and then I'm gonna show where that circle was I sun sun came into the frame when the sun comes into the frame all of your footage gets overexposed so you need to be very careful and let me take a wider angle of the same place so this is the place I was talking about, right? And then it becomes O. Pull it down. So now you have a little sequence for almost 10 to 15 seconds. So let's say you start from here. Yeah, you're telling that it's Manzi tutorial. Then you have a disclaimer. This video is only for educational purpose, not for any commercial reasons. And it looks a little longer. So let us reduce the time limit and then you started your first sequence. I want it till here. I don't want it much bigger. So I'm going to reduce the size of the first clip till here. And then you're showing this little slightly wider angle and then extreme wide angle. 
after that downtown disney life so this is a nice scene so i'm gonna take i and i was panning f uh, sorry yeah panning from left to right that's it this is good i'm gonna keep it here and then i, f I found a really cool christmas tree It is a little shaky, but yeah, I still like it. So I'm gonna see if I can stabilize this particular clip, but I don't think I can stabilize it at the moment. Yeah, so I'm gonna start here. I always prefer to show the close up first and then show the wide angle. And having said that, I don't want to keep this clip after my Christmas tree, but I want to keep it before the Christmas tree. Now what happens is, first you are showing a close up of the particular tree and then you are showing how big and how wide it is. Right? So that would be the end of your second scene. In the third scene, I found this um, Egyptian style cool uh, graffiti on this wall. So I am going to copy that. Small clip. Then paste it. Right below this building, I also found something like this. Right, so I really like the texture and every single thing about this particular wall. I'm gonna take another clip of that and then add it over here. You see, even though the clip is really big, I'm not adding the complete clip. Even though I shot for seven seconds or eight seconds over here, I'm using only two seconds or three seconds. And then from the back I saw this uh, flying dinosaur, I, I don't know what this is, yeah, it looks like a dinosaur and felt it is pretty cool. I went a little closer after this and saw that this dinosaur was actually blasting the flame towards this guy who is sitting in the horse, right, so I want to keep this for a little longer time. pretty cool so I'm just making the sequence first then we are going to add the color profiles after that oh this is the guy I don't want to use this clip or maybe I can use a little bit it's right in front of the Lego store um, I'm gonna keep it over here so now let us see what the sequence looks like we saw the designs and then when we move forward we saw the lego store with the guy and the dinosaur and the close up of the same thing right after that i found this jazz kitchen but you see that i am trying to reveal the jazz kitchen from this particular um, you know um, the covering that there was but it was too slow but not to worry what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna only this part I want it to be slow okay so I'm gonna create take a blade tool cut it over here and select this part and I want this part to move really fast and if I want to move this part really fast I'll select this and go here and then there is an option to speed or fast maybe make it 8x so now you see how it was and you are going to see how it is. It moved fast and suddenly it became slow. So this particular technique is called the ramping and we are going to do a lot today. After that I have saw this, I don't want to use this, I don't want to use this. Christmas tree, this is okay, uh, I can use a little bit of it. Oh, it's glittering. Sure, let's use this. Then I have found some really unique plant species over there which are decorated right under the Christmas tree. I'm gonna take that as well. And every single thing that I see, you don't see the colors popping out because 
it is shot in flat colors the picture profile was c log it is not the normal hdr mode that it took uh, this is also cool uh, yeah this guy looks cool i'm gonna use a little bit of this then I found the home of this knee. I'm gonna take this and then maybe keep it at the starting. Okay. And to this particular frame, I want to add an effect. So I'm gonna go to titles and find out the effect. Something cooler. Um, This effect looks good. Let let us try this. Okay, I'm gonna add this effect. And let us see. Digital Arts Lesson 2. Let us see how it looks at the starting. It's cool. Right, that's cool. So let us extend this a little bit. So it will protrude to our next scene. So essentially what I'm doing is I, I took the effect, I put it on the first clip and I extended a little bit to the second clip. So let's see what happens. Yeah, I, I like that particular effect because it is showing our lesson and it is also showing what it is. So far we have completed till one minute and after that oh, 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 oh this is nice that's all I don't need the whole clip because I want to keep it crisp but I want to show the same information about this particular store and I've seen a lot of people walking walking by Maybe I should add this before I reveal the jazz clip because this is something that, okay, yeah. I took everything in slow motion. We'll talk about the frame rates and how you can shoot something in slow motion. In your iPhone, it is quite easy, but in the camera, you need to think and you need to, it's not that easy. Uh, you need to calculate what you're doing and how you're doing. And I found this really cool fountain. And to this fountain, I'm going to add a new effect which says speed ramp. Oh, no, not speed ramp. Instant replay 50. So this clip, hold on. So now you see what happens when I add an instant replay. So it goes down and goes down. Oh, this is not the effect that I was going for. Okay, let us add the effect that I wanted to show you at the end of this class. So first I want to complete the sequence. Again, same thing. First I showed the close up, then I'm showing where it is exactly located. If you've been to this place, that is great. If you haven't, you need to check this out whenever you get some time. This is essentially a shopping complex, but it's a really good one. You have a lot of places to actually stand and take pictures. I have seen people more than 30, 40 people stopping every single place and taking so many pictures. It says World of Disney. Yeah, so this should be at the starting, I guess. So 
so right after that place I just put it over there and then has have seen some ducks and uh, my puppy was fascinated to see them so i'm gonna add this and how my puppy was looking at them i'll show another clip of this uh, birds and then let me show how my puppy was looking at it. He was a little scared to see the water and uh, those two animals. And then finally I went to the bakery. Yeah, I went to a diamond store also just to check it out. And then I went to the bakery and the bakery was also pretty cool. So I want to end with this Santa Claus. So this would be my end clip. And I'm going to put this at my end. But whatever is there in the bakery, I'm going to add before that. Okay. Oh, those donuts were really good. Like I took a couple of them. And and uh, excuse me, guys. Let us add this particular scene. And a couple of bells at that place. And that should be the end of our video. I told you, right? We'll be making around one and a half minutes video. I thought of making three minutes video, but one and a half minute video sounds good to me. We will be trimming it a little bit more. I don't want this big of a scene for this. Just a small scene. This is also a really nice decor that they had. Finally, yeah, finally they say Merry Christmas. I think this should be the end of the scene. I should have edited this long time back for Christmas but then I thought maybe I should do it with my students, you guys. So here we are. That's it. Did we add the reindeer? No, right? So let us add a small bit of reindeer as well. Now, finally we have completed our video, whatever we wanted to show, we have successfully completed. So it came up to 2 minutes 5 seconds, right? So that is good enough time. So the important part right now what we are planning to do is we are trying to edit our colors. So either you can add a color board to it or there are many filters like how you have your filters in every other uh, social media where you can access your camera, right? The same thing you have a lot of filters and there are some filters which can actually make it really good or which can actually make it really bad as well okay but now I don't want to do that but instead I want to use some LUTs LUT is nothing but light utility tools so I'm gonna use a light utility tool and we are going to go in detail in our next classes about how to color correct but it is quite simple let me show you you have to go here and then select your color for example let us say you are doing it for this particular scene right okay why is it over there so let me pull this 
pack here for this particular scene if you are trying to work right so it became too green and it became too pink too blue too red you see you can play with all the colors like this okay but we don't want to play that bad and we don't want to make our flat look ugly right so that's where either either you can use some aged paper uh, this is alien lab aged film so you have lot of um, already built presets artifacts i don't like artifacts that so much bokeh and all artificial light aura so you see that there are many things but here what i'm using is i'm going to use something called custom lut i'm going to take this custom lut and apply to each and every sequence one i have around 20 sequences to 3 4 so let us see for the first four what happens so you have something called custom lut and from a company i have downloaded around 35 different custom luts and i personally like this one eva 16 because it pops out the colors the same thing i'm going to do it for this one as well there's no color it adds to the second one You see it added that, and it became little, little prominent. You see the how variant these two colors are. They both are of the same scene taken at the same time, but you see how different these colors are. Now here I'm gonna add again the same LUT. LUT is nothing but light utility tool. It's a simple way to do a color grading. The easiest way I'll tell apply adding a LUT. so i have to repeat so here i haven't added any custom lut so i'm going to take this add it over here and then so there should be an easy way to actually do this but i haven't personally tried but let me search for adjustment layer or oh, there is no adjustment layer i used to use uh, premiere pro and So I need to add to each and every individual clip the custom LUT. There could be an easier way where I can add this custom LUT to all the images at once, but I'll still have to figure that out because I'm personally not aware of this particular. I mean, I'm not hundred percent aware of this particular tool called Final Cut Pro because I was always using Adobe Premiere Pro in my Surface Book. But when I moved to Mac, I thought I will. Okay, we have added tools till Lego. So this is color looks really good when I actually add Ava too. But in case if you want to try something, we can actually try something new for the next scene. I think I added this three times. I don't want three LUTs. I want only one LUT. You see how different the color is. If you just remove this. So I'm gonna add the LUT again to show you the difference. The same thing I'm gonna do. Same thing I'm gonna do over here. Oh, here I haven't added the LUT yet. So from here I'm gonna add the LUT again to the next ten clips at once, and then I'm gonna select the LUT that we were discussing. A LUT is nothing but light utility tool 
do not forget that so every single filmmaker uses LUTs like how you use filters that is something similar but you ca you have more flexibility to actually edit this LUTs as well okay from here we need to start and I want all of these things to be in the same color except only the water so whenever we see water we will change the LUT we are almost there, we are half pers 50% there. So let us do for this one. This is oh, this one should be before this. Okay. And then You can apply multiple LUTs to the same image, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to apply only one LUT. And I'm sure that there should be another easy way to actually do this, which I was thinking that I could do it by adding an adjustment layer and adding all of this which I usually do it in Premiere Pro but that is not the way it is not working for this particular tool okay I need to add custom let again over here two three oh my puppy got a big um, screen time this nut is really good but for water as we told we will not use that one but we will try to use any other LUT uh, this doesn't look great this looks dark not every LUT will look good on every single frame so that depends on your exposure or that depends where you are and what is the lighting technique that they used uh, this is too pink for me chemical is going to be too green Let's try neon. No. Kobe. Oh. This looks little natural, but I'm gonna stick to our as usual one. This is the same color grade because I want to make sure that all the clips match with each other. Okay? If I choose different colors, they might not match. And here if you see the highlights the whites have increased and if I want to do the small adjustment then I'll go to saturation you have shadows you have midtones and you have highlights so I want to pull this highlights a little down so it is not going to look very bright so that all you will learn when you're actually learning about color gels and uh, color theory okay here it, since it's an indoor let me see if the LUT looks good yeah it's actually not bad and then oh here I haven't added any LUT so for the last four scenes let us add LUTs and then finally finish the video You see, this is a time taking process, but yeah, the process is time taking and tedious, but it is definitely rewarding when you actually complete a really good video. So finally we are saying Merry Christmas, right? And then, see this, this one looks dark to me. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to again open my color wheel and take the exposure and find out the midtones and then increase the temperature a little bit increase the highlights a little bit and decrease the 
shadows or maybe this looks good same thing with i'll do with the santa claus because santa claus also looks underexposed so i'm just going to create a little bit more exposure so we can actually clearly see him this all looks good so our two minute five seconds video is done at the end i don't want it to end abruptly right i want it to end smoothly so i'm going to add a keyframe okay i'm going to add a keyframe at the at this point and at the end now what i'm telling my system essentially to do is from the first keyframe to the second keyframe reduce the opacity by 100% that means whenever it comes closer to the end it slowly fades out so that's a technique that I use for most of the videos that I make. Now finally, we need a two minute audio. So let us go to some royalty free music. Let's listen to this song. No, oh, this is too big. I don't want to. Sounds not bad. Right? I'm going to copy this link. Go to I usually spend more time I actually you choose my music from something uh, music bed.com you need to visit this or you need to see this if you are a music if you are a musician you if you make music you can post your music over here and people purchase your music and people purchase your music for a really good amount of money and there are a lot of music makers that makes uh, thousands of dollars every month by selling their music over here so you can check it out, you can download an app and uh, you can listen to their songs for free. But whenever you download without a subscription, you're going to get a watermark. So it's going to shout music bed, music bed in between, which I don't want. So I'm, I'm just going to go to YouTube, sorry, uh, yeah, YouTube and uh, find out this copyright music. And then download this. Okay, so it is over here. So once I download this free background music for YouTube video for content creators. So this is a free music, so I'll not have any copyright issues, right? So I'm gonna minimize this, make my screen a little smaller, and then put it over here. So the first thing is. I wanna don't start from here. From that from that particular beat I want to start. So I'm gonna take my blade tool, cut the starting of the song, and then remove this part, move this part till here, and then I have something called fade into so it's going to slowly fade in till here this looks long right so we can reduce the disclaimer Now you see the colors are quite different. Let us watch the video once.
remember the process that I did because I'll be asking you certain set of questions that only if you have watched this video or only if you have completely gone through this particular video you could be able to answer it if, you are, if not you will not be able to answer it so here I want to reduce the frame size of this particular bit a little bit till here yeah so now what happens is it's band down and then shows the wide angle of it I want to reduce this guy's frame also it doesn't need that much screen time and um, I don't have any story here I'm just showing you how to add colors and how to change or how to play with the colors so this particular thing or this particular technique has been used by all the technicians all the filmmakers here the music is ending right I want to end the music here as well so I'm gonna crop it delete it and we don't want this so I'm gonna reduce it but at the same time we don't want the music to end abruptly so if you come here and if you see how the music is going to end is this is very abrupt ending so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fade in fade out slowly now see this that's a nice ending so finally what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to file share and share it as a master copy and settings yeah so this is this one format for computer and I'm not going to do it for Apple devices I'm gonna do it for computer and info is good I'm gonna go next and yeah this is the class 2 video file that th that we are going to save now okay so it's going to take a while it's going to take at least uh, 8 to 10 minutes for me to complete this process and have the video in hand so it's going to show me how long it is going to take it's still at 0% so it's going to take around uh, as I told you ten, 8 to 10 minutes so let us see how long it is going to take because it's all 4k right it's going to take a little longer yeah it just started so now let us go back to the presentation that I showed to you so before showing you to the presentation I want to show you So follow this particular website called Studio Binder so they actually gives you a really good uh, description about what exactly um, color grading is or color correction is so color correction is a technical process that fix the color issues and makes your footage appear more naturalistic as possible so that is what I was trying to do so when I created um, this particular grade or this particular when I use this light or light utility tool I was trying to make it more realistic and more naturalistic to our human eyes how we usually see our world or the world around us right so that is the process of color grading but these days I have seen a lot of people what they add is they add this unrealistic filters which makes people cartoon or which makes people look really different than how we actually see so that is something that people might not prefer that is totally depending on your audience or your viewers perspective but uh, most people prefer to see 
the in the natural way right so next time you're adding a filter or you're adding something think about it and what kind of filter that you're adding and how you are doing it so we'll be learning in the next classes about hue saturation color brightness and what are the other tools that you can use so one of the great tool that i used to use is called uh, premiere pro and there is another tool called DaVinci Resolve. Some of you guys know about DaVinci Resolve because it's a free software and it's a very powerful software that you can you guys can download and start working on it if you have a good computer. In case if you do not have computer, that is totally fine. We are going to learn a lot about this, and you will have something called scopes. You will have something called curves. So I can show you what a curve looks like. And these are some of the things that you will be learning. So I'll be sending you this link as well in our classroom. So you guys can go over this particular link and just read it over. And this is a really interesting place to start or understand what is color grading or the concept of color theory. Okay, let us move back and see if this is done. Oh, there's only six percent done. Once this video is completed, I will share it with you guys in your Google Classroom. So you guys can view it, watch it and understand how it works okay so at this point i'm going to stop my recording and i'm going to post this class recording as well in your google classroom